So in order to enter the turbine, it's absolutely imperative that we're all suitably dressed in order to get there. In addition to the helmet, have a have a light in case the lights go out inside, a full body harness, a slider for accessing the ladder fall arrest system. If that fails, I have twin lanyards in order to access on the ladder and a manyard for work positioning within the turbine. Have a look inside then. In order to stop the turbine, I need to switch it to local control inside the cabinet. The hand controller, and that's the end to the service code. I simply press stop in order to top the turbine. I've entered the service code earlier on. I should now just stop the turbine. And that's the turbine stopped. small cramped section called the yaw section. See me here we've got these yaw claws, these hold the nacelle to the top of the tower and there's 22 of these substantial pieces of metal clamped here around the top underneath the nacelle. The export cables come through the yaw section and then down into the twist section before carrying on further down the side of the turbine wall where they're exported. So from the yaw section then we go through this grate above us and into the nacelle. no access to the cell and we're looking down over the gearbox towards the generator. It's about 35 degrees in here, extremely humid and not a place that anyone would really want to work. So to improve the environment we can open these two hatches and the cell doors. turbine and the heart of the business are these wind instruments that we can see at the back. We've got an anemometer, a wind vane and an ultrasonic instrument that does both. The computer uses this information to work out where the wind turbine has to point and the pitch angle so it can take the energy out of the wind and put it through this generator. So the power signals for the yaw are fed to these eight motors around the top of the nacelle here. The power is driven through a gearbox and onto a pinion which has a, a ring gear on top of the tower. This will keep the nacelle pointing into wind and the nacelle will follow the wind for up to three revolutions when the nacelle will need to untwist its cables and reset itself. Behind me you can see the composite fibre blade. It's 40 metres long 
and it joins to a hub that's two metres in diameter, a total of 82 metres diameter, giving the roads a swept area of some 8,000 square metres. shaft input to the Winergy gearbox in front of me is at about 17 rpm. This converts it to about 1500 rpm and then this ABB generator here turns that into 2.3 megawatts at 690 volts. It feeds that down the tower, converts that to 33 kilovolts and then out to our substation where it's turned into 132 kilovolts and put onto the national grid.